Uh, welcome to the short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. Today's topic is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The learning objectives for today's topic will be uh, we will uh, define what Hashimoto's thyroiditis is, we will understand the etiology and pathogenesis of it, and then we will describe the morphology along with the clinical features. We will understand how to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and then we will end with uh, knowing the various complications of. Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in areas where iodine levels are sufficient. So it's basically uh, it is a gradual thyroid failure due to autoimmune destruction of thyroid gland. So uh, let me tell you how this uh, disease was identified. Way back in the year 1912, a young uh, Japanese surgeon by name Hakaru Hashimoto, he was uh, very much interested in uh, thyroid uh, uh, diseases. Those were the times when uh, you know, uh, the surgeons uh, used to examine uh, the uh, surgical specimens. So at this point of time, he found out that there were uh, some thyroid diseases which he found uh, that they had some uh, peculiar features. So what he called then was uh, stroma lymphomatosa. Uh, uh, the reason why he called that was he found that the thyroid gland of these diseases had uh, lots of infiltration by lymphocytes. He was very sure that he had found out a new disease but then he couldn't give it a name. So he just gave this as stroma lymphomatosa. Uh, it was only after his death in the late 1930s and early 1940s people actually uh, began to identify uh, such diseases throughout the world and then the name Hashimoto's thyroiditis was given. Now let's define what Hashimoto's thyroiditis is. So it is a disease characterized by diffuse goitrous enlargement of the thyroid, lymphocytic infiltration of the thyroid gland and the presence of thyroid autoantibodies. It's commonly found uh, in middle-aged uh, females, okay, it's found in the age group of around 45 to uh, 65 years. As I told you, it's more common in females in the ratio of 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 20. And remember, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a major cause of non-endemic goiter in children. Now, what is the etiology for Hashimoto's thyroiditis? One, uh, genetic predisposition. So, it just means that a person should be genetically predisposed to the development of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Okay, let us know that in more detail in uh, coming slides. Second one, uh, immune causes in the form of autoantibody production. As we know that this is an autoimmune disease, so it has to be a production of autoantibodies. So, it is not that autoantibody production in the genetically predisposed individual, it is also because of various environmental factors like, you know, infections, dietary factors like iodine, stress and pregnancy. These are the ones which can initiate autoimmunity in the thyroid gland in a genetically susceptible individual. Uh, this type of thyroiditis is more commonly seen in HLA, DR3 and HLA, DR5 subtypes. So, what is the basis for uh, genetic uh, predisposition? The basis is that this disease has higher incidence in the first degree relatives of the affected patients. Okay, now moving on to uh, the immune causes. We will understand, uh, let us understand uh, these two set of genes. One, immune regulatory genes and two, thyroid specific genes. The immune regulatory genes are uh, CTLA4 uh, which are also known as cytotoxic T lymphocyte associated antigen number 4. And second one is protein tyrosine phosphatase number 22. So these are the two genes which are implicated in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The second set of genes which will be implicated are the thyroid specific genes which are thyroglobulin and uh, thyroid stimulating hormone receptor. So it is uh, shown that the basic reason for any individual to be susceptible for Hashimoto's is gene polymorphism. Okay. Now what is meant by gene polymorphism? A gene is said to be polymorphic if more than one allele occupies that gene's locus within a population. So what happens here is that there is a polymorphism in these two set of genes, CTLA4 and PTPN22. We know that these are the major negative regulators of T-cell mediated immune functions. So whenever there is a polymorphism in these set of genes, it results in increased susceptibility to Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So let us understand pathogenesis in detail. Okay. So now we know that in a genetically predisposed individual, there is autoimmune destruction of 
thyroid gland. So there is a breakdown in self tolerance and then there is T cell sensitization and induction of autoimmunity. So we have understood this concept in the previous slides, isn't it? So what happens here is that there is recruitment of these CD4 helper T cells. So what does these helper T cells do? They recruit CD8 plus cytotoxic T cell. They also recruit B cells in the form of plasma cells. So the CD8 plus uh, cytotoxic T cells is the one which uh, causes T cell mediated cytotoxicity. Okay. The CD4 plus helper T cells also recruits you know, gamma interferon which is a cytokine and this results in activation of macrophages and plasma cells we all know that it produces antibodies and there will be formation of anti-thyroid antibodies particularly to uh, thyroglobulin and TSH receptor. These antibodies along with uh, natural killer cell uh, results in antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. So now we know that there is a cell mediated cytotoxicity, there is a cytokine mediated killing and antibody mediated. So all these three results in the destruction of thyroid follicular epithelial cells. So this is the pathogenesis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So how does this thyroid gland looks grossly? It is a diffuse enlargement, can be nodular at times, okay. The gland is very well demarcated. On cut section, it is pale, yellow tan, rubbery to form or nodular. So, so on microscopy, there is a diffuse infiltration of the parenchyma of the thyroid by mononuclear inflammatory cells. When I say mononuclear inflammatory cells, they are lymphocytes and plasma cells. You can easily see that there are lots of blue dots over here. These are the mononuclear inflammatory infiltrates. And another important uh, feature what you are seeing is that there is varying degree of atrophy of thyroid follicles. So this is another magnification of the same uh, thyroid tissue where you can easily see that there is diffuse infiltration of lymphocytes and plasma cells along with the lymphoid follicle there. This is a slide where uh, you can see that these thyroid follicular epithelial cells are different from the normal thyroid follicular epithelial cells. Okay, So these are the large cells, polygonal cells having abundant granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. Okay, And these are referred to as Hardell cells and the presence of Hardell cells is characteristic of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Another magnification of Hardell cells where you can easily see uh, these cells having abundant granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. Another view of Hardell cells showing the polygonal cells with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. So this is a beautiful image showing uh, you know, a classical Hardell cell along with infiltration of lymphoid cells there. So this is another area where you can easily uh, make out a lymphoid follicle with prominent germinal center. So the features on microscopy are there will be varying degrees of atrophy of the follicles. There is diffuse infiltration of uh, the parenchyma of thyroid by mononuclear cells. There can be formation of lymphoid follicles sometimes with prominent germinal centers. And the characteristic feature is the presence of Hurdle cell metaplasia. Okay, you can also see that um, at times their interstitial connective tissue may be increased. So there are some variants of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. One is classical, what we had discussed before, and two fibrous variant where this particular thyroid is nodular, form to hard, where there will be severe follicular atrophy, and then there is presence of keloid-like fibrosis within the capsule where you know you can see broad bands of acellular collagen encompassing the residual thyroid tissue. So these are the major variants of uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis microscopically. How do you diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis? One, by the clinical features, we know that it is more commonly affecting middle-aged women. It's, uh, it presents with painless enlargement of thyroid gland and there can be varying degree of hypothyroidism which is found by the decreased T3 and T4 TSH will be increased and then you can demonstrate the presence of anti-thyroid antibodies. So the diagnostic tests can be in the form of a fine needle aspiration cytology of the thyroid gland as well as histopathological examination where you can find the characteristic uh, microscopic features of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what are the complications? The first one is uh, Hashi toxicosis. 
in the initial uh, stages where there is destruction of thyroid follicular epithelial cells t3 and t4 hormones are released into circulation that is when there will be a transient hyperthyroid state okay that's called hashi toxicosis see the infiltrated lymphoid cells can undergo clonal proliferation and may result in the formation of b cell non hodgkin lymphomas and there is also a, a an increased risk for other autoimmune diseases like diabetes type 1 adrenalitis systemic lupus erythematosus myasthenia gravis etc and lastly there can be a risk for other thyroid epithelial neoplasms particularly papillary carcinomas of thyroid note that papillary carcinoma of thyroid is just an association with Hashimoto's thyroiditis whereas non hodgkin lymphoma is a major complication i mean the Hashimoto's thyroiditis can give rise to non hodgkins lymphoma of thyroid so in summary uh, we understood the definition of Hashimoto's thyroiditis we talked about the etiology pathogenesis morphology clinical features and then we learned as to how to diagnose along with uh, a note on complications of Hashimoto's thyroiditis thank you for watching if you like this video please hit the like button do comment please subscribe for more videos to come please do share thank you